Hello, I'm Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services here in Plymouth, Indiana. And this is another free ground school video for you that I'm adding to my YouTube channel. Keep in mind that these videos are not edited and I am not an artist, but this is exactly what you can expect if you came to Plymouth, Indiana to prepare for your check ride. A lot of the information that you'll have to know for your check ride is going to be in the oral part of the check ride. You have to understand the helicopter ground school topics and you have to be able to fly the helicopter. So I find that most people struggle with the ground school topics. Having access to my YouTube channel for free, you can save yourself a lot of time before you ever come to train with me. In this video, we will talk about low G in a helicopter. Now, fixed wing or airplane pilots that are transferring over into the helicopter are at risk for getting the helicopter into low G because an airplane can be uh, placed into low G by putting it into a nosedive. This can be a dangerous situation on the helicopter. There is a couple ways that a helicopter could get into low G. It could be due to the pilot actually pushing forward on the cyclic too much, or it could be turbulence. If you become light in the seat in the helicopter, you know that you've gone into low G. In other words, the helicopter is no longer hanging from the rotor head, causing the blades to have a load on them. They begin to spin willy-nilly, if you will, and it is very important not to give that rotor system inputs while it is not loaded. That's where you can get into trouble. So let's look at what happens with the helicopter when you get into low G. When you get into low G, this tail rotor has this long arm of leverage and it's going to push the helicopter to the right. Now, we're talking about a counterclockwise rotating system that has the tail rotor on the left thrusting to the right towards the tail boom, such as an Enstrom, such as a Robinson or a Schweitzer. Those aircraft are going to actually roll violently to the right when you get into a low G situation. If you're in a rotorway or a cavalry, something turning clockwise, it's just going to uh, roll to the left instead of to the right. The key is do not correct for the roll before you load the rotor system. Giving inputs to that rotor system that is not loaded in a semi-rigid can cause mast bumping and it could be to the extent of actually severing the shaft. Also, you could cause inputs to the rotor system that could cause a tail strike from the uh, main rotor striking the tail. A semi-rigid system that's underslung will look something like this. Now, if this is not loaded in other words, if the helicopter is not hanging from this rotor system and you put a lateral input in before you load that rotor system, it could look something like this. Right here is the problem. It is possible and it has happened 
where on a semi-rigid system in a low G situation with improper inputs by the pilot, the rotor system can cut its own shaft and then the helicopter uh, cannot be landed safely. Uh, that would result in a fatal accident. Now if you have a fully articulated rotor system, it is still dangerous to conduct low G maneuvers or to get the helicopter into low G and to give inputs before you load it as well because a fully articulated system such as the Enstrom can suffer from mast bump pounding. Although not resulting in an accident, but causing damage to your rotor system. So you've got mast bumping. And you've got mast bump pounding. The way to recover the helicopter in low G, and it could happen, it could be flying in... Um, high winds, turbulent air, you find yourself light in the seat, helicopter rolling either to the left or the right depending on the aircraft you're flying. The, the recovery is the same. Gentle aft cyclic to reload that rotor system and to fill your butt back in the seat. You need to be weighted in the seat so you know the helicopter is back hanging from the rotor system. You reloaded the rotor system by going gentle aft on the cyclic. Not abruptly back on the cyclic because that would be an abrupt control input to an unloaded rotor system. Gentle aft cyclic until you feel that that rotor system is reloaded and your butt is in the seat. Then you can correct for the roll. Then you can go left cyclic if you're in a counterclockwise rotating ship or right cyclic if you're in a clockwise rotating ship. The key is the first input has to be gentle aft cyclic. So that's low G. It's a very short topic to talk about but it is so important especially if you're flying a semi-rigid helicopter. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be making more. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell. You'll get notified when there's more videos coming out. And I hope you have a good day.